Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. Thank you for joining me. If you've been following along on this project and if you're new for the first time, welcome. I hope if you enjoy this video, you'll give me a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss anything, hit subscribe. And you can also follow me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page and I kind of put whatever I'm working on day to day there. So um, in between my videos that aren't maybe as frequent as we want, um, you can see what I'm up to over there and there's other things going on. So um, thank you. And uh, today I'm going to be working on this uh, journal. Like I said, I'll put the link to the whole series, this whole playlist, so you can start from the beginning if you want to follow along. But basically what I have started doing here is um, I decided I wanted to challenge myself. The last two projects that I have done both involved um, altered books. And when you do altered books, you end up taking a lot of pages out. And so I ended up with stacks of a uh, book page. And also when I did the last two, I used uh, book page, book uh, paper packs, maybe one or two. So it was really easy to kind of have a, a flow throughout the book and a theme kind of thing. So it kind of made it really easy. So I decided to challenge myself and I came up with the idea while I was working on the last one. And, and so I, I did little teaser videos about that, but I decided I was gonna make something only using recycled book page paper. So I had a question, somebody wanted me to do the stacked envelope um, journal again, which is kind of where I very first started back in August when I started this channel. So I've learned a few things and I decided to go ahead and do one using the book page paper and so the, the first main video of this one, you'll see how to put this all together. So if you want to um, kind of follow along, start back there and then you'll get caught up and we can kind of come up with ideas together. So I've done a second video on this where I started making my paper and I decided I'm going to, um, even though I've started on this and I've got lots of ideas I've been working on and experiments, I'm going to try to break the videos up into smaller, uh, videos so that you can find each subject subject matter easier when to if you need to go back and reference it so today's the first one here is going to be mostly about different ways to alter your paper um, to decorate the inside of your book so um, the first uh, I did a video that I had um, done some experiments about weights of paper like if I wanted to make cardstock uh, cards for insert cards or envelopes, that kind of thing. So you can go back and look at that one too. I had done some experiments. I'm gonna go just briefly in case this is the first video you wanna watch that will kind of encompass um, everything I've come up with so far about paper. So uh, first thing I did uh, was to make, kind of sort out my papers. So I've got different colors here. Some have pictures and some don't. Um, if you wanted to kind of keep your book obvious that it was made out of recycled paper, you can manipulate it in different ways, but leaving it mostly with the book text showing through. And then you still have different colors paper depending on how many books you've torn up. So you can kind of sort it through that way to get uh, get you going. And then I've pulled out some pictures and some uh, that had uh, color on them. Maybe I'll use those in collage in some way, or even just the color. So I've kind of separated some of those out. And then you also maybe want to sort out pages that have room that you can um, print or do something else on that doesn't have text. So like the beginning of a chapter, sometimes it's dropped down. So I kind of pulled stuff out like that. The other thing that I decided to do was go ahead and try different weights. And so I've, I found that the best way for me to do it that I liked was um, I'm using a glue stick to glue my papers together. I went ahead and made up a bunch that just have two pieces of paper together. Now I have been using this Elmer's purple, uh, disappearing purple, because you can kind of see where the glue is. And I like that about it. I had run out of these larger ones and had bought some Scholastic I didn't like this as much. It didn't work. I was using it mostly on um, this really old, uh, this really old book, and it just didn't stick the paper together. So someone told me that um, Scotch Brand is their favorite, but I haven't been able to find it. I'm gonna have to order it online. So I did just buy some more of this, 
and I think it works great. So once you get your paper together, you'll notice that sometimes your glue skips and it doesn't cover perfectly. I found that the best thing to do then is to take your iron, and I always have my ironing board set up because I'm tall, and so it's a good place for me to cut paper. I leave my paper cutter there. And I have started using this um, just so I don't run my ironing board because I do iron clothing on it also, is I'm not a quilter, but I have this Quilters Cut and Press 2 by June Taylor, and it's one side uh, a cutting mat, which is great, and then you can iron on this side. So I use this so that I don't ruin my iron or my ironing board, and then I take just an extra single sheet of book page to protect if I've painted or anything, glued anything on it. That way I don't ruin the back of my iron. So I've made up a bunch of these to have. That's a good idea to get started. And then um, I also did some experiments with gesso and I'm just using uh, Liquitex uh, white gesso. And I wanted to create some paper that I could write on. And so this is just two coats of gesso on it. If you don't want to see through uh, what you're writing on, you don't wanna see the text through, this, I believe I did four coats. So uh, it made it so that you really don't notice the text in there so much. But both of them worked well and just using an archival type pen and not waterproof. And that, and that did fine, a Sharpie, a little skinny Sharpie one, or this is a Unipen fine line, something like that. And you can journal on those. So you have to think if we're gonna make this a junk journal, you want to have some pages that you can write on and cards you can write on. So I found that the white gesso in however many coats you want to cover up your uh, book text. So make up a bunch of those. And that's just a single sheet. I just did it on both sides so that I will be able to make a booklet out of this. And I kind of covered how I did that in another video. Then the other thing that I did was I tried gluing some together um, just to see different thicknesses for a book, you know, for uh, cover book covers. And so this was, I think, four pieces maybe, and it would make a nice book cover. Um, three even would do like just little notepads if you want to put notepads inside. Um, and again, I did those just gluing them together and then ironing on, um, I think I have it set kind of no, no higher than wool. I did find that when I had it too hot and I had paint or gesso already on it, that I got some bubbling up. It was it was too hot. You can flatten it back out, but you feel that texture. So um, just a silk to wool setting uh, seemed to work really good. This is just kind of a card size again. And uh, I found that, that starting out my pages, if I know it's gonna become a card or something like that, I use the ones where I've glued two together. The other thing that I did was take strips and just weave them in like a basket weave pattern just for the texture. And then I've gone ahead with gesso on this one, but if I, if I use my um, distress, it will show that pattern up. And I've done that on a little, a little piece that I showed in another video, but you can paint on this too and then go over with your inking and it'll just give you that dimensional texture uh, for maybe uh, notepad covers or something like that. So I did that little sampling with just some different weights. So you can make some of those papers up ahead of time. And then that way, as you're trying to come up with your theme, like I did, at least you're moving forward on your project. So the next thing that I had done is I started, I knew that on my book, um, the one thing, even though I didn't have a theme, I knew when I made this book, I loved how colorful it was. I don't always work this bright. Sometimes I do something maybe with just three colors and it's much more muted. So I find myself when I work on a project that's kind of like that, then I, I'm kind of anxious to work on something really bold, you know, just to mix it up. This paper pack, I do have a, a flip through of this journal um, and I'll put the link to that so you can, you can see the insides of this because I know it's kind of a tease. But Everybody keeps asking me what paper pack this is. It's discontinued, it's old. And I'd had it from just, I don't know, I bought it and fell in love with it and had it around for a long time. I use it. I used to use it in my jewelry cards um, for my jewelry is kind of a bohemian uh, kind of jewelry. And so I used it to just do my displays and things, but you can't get it anymore. So I made a joke that I needed to um, recreate the, my own paper in this kind of style. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna do for this journal. That's kind of how I got started in all of this 
at all was um, I knew that paper was discontinued and I, like I said, I use it for my jewelry cards. And so I thought, I can't get it anymore. I need more jewelry cards. I'm gonna have to design something on my own. So if you watched my last video um, with, it's a button video, but at the beginning of that, I kind of go over what I've been doing so far this year. I do a lot of different things. So if you're curious, go back and watch the beginning of that video just um, to see what other kind of things I do. So back to this one though. Um, the other thing that I did for paper is, and I did a, the last video in this series is about um, starting mixed media paper. I didn't finish it. I just did the first couple of steps. So I'll just kind of recap that really quick here uh, for those that are brand new. I took a pile of book page and then I took, um, just acrylic paint in just a bunch of colors that I liked. And I literally would squirt it right on the paper, no gesso, nothing, just one layer of paper. And then I'd just use my card and I would do this and I would go paper to paper to paper. And then I'd pick a different color, paper to paper to paper. I did that for all these piles. And the reason I kind of wanted some here and some there and mix it up is that eventually then they all kind of go together because there's a little bit on of like say the orange on a lot of different papers, but then maybe I've put it with a darker green or something like that. So that's kind of where I started. Then I added what I'm gonna call my texture stamps. Um, actually when I put the paint on, and if you do um, jelly plates at all, that's a whole different video I would do, but you, this it was same similar kind of technique where you just squirt it on there and then you know you're imprinting it. But it can be sloppy. It's just the first layer of the background. Now someone did ask me if I gessoed my paper first, and I did not. And the reason I didn't is because I knew I was going to be making this in a mixed media style where I wanted lots of layers. And so to me, having that text show through in little bits um, was like a free layer. So some of them it shows up more and some of them it doesn't. So it's just, just haphazard. So after I got that, then I took things like, um, you know, some screen or uh, cork, uh, cap on a water bottle. I keep a whole little drawer of, of things. I have a little, if I can get it out here. I have this little rubber comb, um, just different things to just create some different textural patterns in my paint. So it's just acrylic paint and things. So just kind of get some texture going on there. And then I have what I call textural stamps and, or stencils. And they are um, things like this that just kind of have uh, geometric kind of textures, just different things. So I just use these here and there. Same thing, I would take a particular color and then I would just jump around. I would do some on this one and move, you know, and just do them here and there random. So if you've ever done mixed media, you're probably way more experienced already than I am. But this is kind of, if you haven't, you know, played around with that kind of thing. It's a lot of fun. A child could do this, you know, get your kids and, you know, put a bunch of paper on, cover your plastic over your table for sure, for kids. But um, it's just a fun little quick thing to do. So once I got to having those two layers and some of you know my little circle shapes and that kind of thing are the corks. Um, you can even use these little um, you know these little pouncing for stencils. They're a circle and I kind of just twist them like that. So check out that other video. It has kind of all that stuff. Then the next thing I did was I decided I wanted to do maybe some more decorative stamping or stenciling on, on them. And one thing I learned about stencils that I didn't know um, before I started doing all this, A, I'm not very good at it, and B, there is a top and a bottom to a stencil. And so when you get that weeping underneath, it's because you have your stencil upside down. It could also be because you have too much paint on there, but um, it will happen that, that way even if you use a pen or something, if you have it upside down. When they make a stencil, it's laser cut, and so there's a tiny bevel, even if you can't see it to your naked eye, but there's a blade that's cutting, and so it's kind of creating that. If you have it upside down, then that bevel is underneath the stencil, and that's when you get some of that bleeding. So that's just one reason that that mistake happens. So the solution to that is when you take your stencils out of your package, put an X or write the word up or something on your stencil so that you know what the top side is. 
some of them come with a, like a brand name or something like that. That's the top side. But for ones that don't like these, I had to mark them. So I took um, some decorative stencils because I knew I started to kind of develop my idea in my head what I wanted this journal to look like. And I wanted it to kind of have a bohemian feel and be very colorful. And that's about as far as I got as far as style. So I, I thought, well, what do I already have as far as stencils that could go with that? I have some paisley ones and this kind of reminded me of a mandala kind of shape. And then of course these do too and the little elephant. So these kind of went with a theme. So I decided to kind of use these. And for those, I decided some of them I would do directly onto the paper, but some of them I might want to be embellishments. So what I have done is taken um, some of my papers, the just the single layer, and then I've used my stencil and I decided to do it in gold. Just because I kind of, I'm doing this kind of exotic kind of feel, I think, that I'm heading towards. So I learned one thing doing this that I wanted to share is if you take your stencil and you go right to your paper with it and you do your gold pen, the gold pens that I'm using are kind of like a gel pen, so a lot of ink comes out and flows, if that makes sense. And doing that, then it can bleed under the stencil. So I had that happen on a little elephant that I did, and I decided I needed to fix that because I don't want to have to be that careful, and you just can't help it sometimes. So what I did was took a, a black pen and I used a Pigma Micron 01 is the side, it's archival ink. That's what I used. And you wanna use archival ink or non uh, waterproof ink because you're gonna be introducing liquid on top and you don't want the colors to blend. And you want it to be a really teeny tiny um, pen because you want that gold pen, which is just a ballpoint pen to go over it. So I use this one. I've since left the lid off and dried it up. So um, a similar one uh, that works is a Unipin Fine Line. This one's a 0.2 size. The other one was an 01 size. So anything that my other pen will cover over. So that'll work. And then these pens that I've been doing my doodling and outlining and things with, I got these at Walmart. They came in a pack of three. They're Uniball Signo Broad is the size I got. That way it goes over the thinner black line. So I'm loving these. So I went and I just made up, um, I just would find a spot on my paper that like I liked. And it doesn't matter if it even fits on the whole thing um, because even just parts of it, like I, I only wanted an embellishment on this corner so I really only used a small part of it. So um, it doesn't even have to be the whole paper. You just kind of find the spot that you like your stencil, you know, the color you see through. So that is one thing. And like I said, you just outline it with the black pen and then go over that outline with the gold pen or silver, white, whatever. You could even use a color. These aren't as broad um, a pen, but these are like adult coloring um, pens and they're gel pens. I got these at Walmart too, and they have a box of 36 for 10 bucks. So they, some of them are metallic and some of them are not, but they're all nice bright colors. So you can kind of, depending on the theme of your book, use your imagination, um, but think um, embellishments. So these, uh, once you made an embellishment, I know that I wanna cut out these, cut these out and um, do some slow stitching on them. So before I do that, I go ahead and I add another piece of paper. And when you have painted all of these, and you're doing your different things, they get ripply and all that because you're introducing liquid paint or whatever to the paper. So what I do is in between, if they get a little ripply, I'll go back to, and iron them again. And so that I'm always kind of starting out with a nice flat surface that I'm working with. So two layers on this for uh, cutting out. And then I just kind of cut out, um, you know, fussy cut the shape. I have one somewhere here. Where did it go that I've cut out? Let me look in my box. This is a handy thing to do too, is um, I for each project, I keep this box and so I empty it out and the next project will go in here. 
and it's just a place that I can keep all my little things that might get used in this journal. So I've been cutting out little things and, you know, just painting on little punches, that kind of stuff, making little flower embellishments. And somewhere I've now put a couple of things that I was working on, little scraps. Once I've cut them out, I don't want to toss them. So I, I use them here. That's another thing I can show. Now I can't find my little one that I have cut out. I promised I fussy, oh here it is. I promised I fussy cut something out. So this one's two layers. And then I just kind of go around the shape, even though it's a stencil, you know, it doesn't have a complete outside line. I just kind of eyeball one and, and make it kind of even. So this one, I've already started doing some slow stitching. I'll do a whole separate video on that. Um, but, you know, you can do that. You can add little of uh, these little rhinestone embellishment kind of things that are flat backed. That's what I've done on this one. So I've done some slow stitching, some little gems, um, punched holes where the circles were in the design. So you kind of just follow the design of the stencil and embellish it to you know, make it kind of stand out and look dimensional and just more interesting. So that is one thing to make embellishments. So you can get started making those too um, once you've made some colorful paper. And I just cut these out and then at night watching TV, I can work on slow stitching those. So the other thing that I did um, after stenciling was um, some doodling. And I took this, I had stenciled already with paint just using a little the little foam dauber things. And then I outlined it freehand with the gold pen. So that just was kind of, you know, anything circles here on, on that texture stamp, um, that kind of thing. This, every everywhere I did a big circle, I would just take my whole pile of paper and everywhere I had made some kind of circle, I did uh, just gold dots all around the edge and then just a swirl um, on all of them. So that way it's just kind of a relaxing thing to do to just go through and doodle on all of them. On these I had done an arrow so I did just in between the arrow I just did kind of a freehand scroll kind of a look. Um, this one I did equal signs between just you know just doodling my little circles. Love how bright this one is but they're all a little different but then they kind of cross-pollinate, I guess would be a good way to say it. Then the next thing um, to keep adding your layers to your mixed media paper uh, is to do some stamping. Um, oh, I should show you this first because this is doodling. So I took the white pen and just freehand doodled on paper. I ended up using this one as the background of my journal card. And this one is just, this one was done on paper. You can kind of see the different colors behind um, that. And there's even another st uh, stencil underneath there. You can see it's all just layers. So you don't have to worry about being neat because all those first background ones are now covered up by all this busy doodling. You know, when you think about paper packs, if you think about one that is a designer pack, they'll have um, a small uh, like they'll have maybe some pattern, some papers have like five colors and there'll be florals. So maybe there's large floral and then a small floral. And then some of the papers just have two colors. So, you, and you'll have geometric prints or large geometric prints or stripes. So kind of think about that variety as you're creating your papers for your journal and it'll have that kind of designer paper cohesive look. So in those kind of paper packs, you'll see maybe two different colors in a similar design that are totally contrasting like this. So this was just one color hot pink that I did. Um, and then, like I said, this one was a model of color, but it, it almost translated as a solid color in the end. And then I just did the white. Now on the card, you'll notice that it really doesn't look white. And that's because this one is done on uh, acrylic paint that had dried. And this one, I used Distressed Oxide, which is water soluble. And I just, you know, used my little pouncer thing and colored it. So what happened then when I introduced the fluid from my gel pen, it kind of turned that doodling into kind of just a lighter shade of the lavender in the, um, 
in the Distress Oxide. Now this color of Distress Oxide is called um, Seedless Preserves. I just bought a couple more of these. Um, I hadn't really had too many colorful ones, but when I decided my journal was gonna be colorful, and I don't have a lot of pink things. If you watch my video, I'm always saying I don't do much pink. Apparently I'm starting to do more pink. So I, I got this one's Picked Raspberry and then Worn Lipstick. And you'll know I've, I've always used this um, Peacock Feather, which is one of my favorite ones. So I already had that. So now I've got like a pink purple and a turquoise that I can use along with my vintage photo that I always do. So just, you know, do mixed media designs, doodling, uh, freehand stuff, stenciling you can do, and then stamping. Um, that's, you know, if you've done mixed media, you do a lot of stamping. On this one, I've actually, I, I chose some stamps that I thought went with kind of my my bohemian, kind of travel -y theme, kind of wandering um, theme that's turning, that my book is turning into. So I just got some stamps. And I'm, I've used, uh, you wanna use archival ink for sure because if you introduce any kind of sprays, which I do, and water and that kind of thing after, it'll all run and smear and you'll, it'll disappear. So use archival ink. This is um, by Ranger also, and it's the, the Tim Holtz Distress Archival Ink. And I've got black soot here and ground espresso that I've been using. And I kind of just jump around. I don't care if it covers the whole thing. I'll maybe get ink on the stamp and then move it around. I've also used, um, I'm using this uh, ledger script also by Tim Holtz. It's from Stampers Anonymous. And it's just a couple of different texts. I like that they're going different directions and they're not legible. Uh, it just, again, is something that's nice for the background that I've done here or there. And then I even have taken some, uh, because I had kind of some wine color accents in some of the papers, I just went and got one that had more red. This is just something I had around, but again, it's waterproof in um, <clears throat> Cardinal. Once you've done this, um, you'll find that some of your papers are maybe uh, brighter than you want them to be. I needed to take a drink of water because I'm about to lose my voice here. Uh, they might be brighter or color you don't really like. There's a, a trick that you can do for that. <coughs> If you've done mixed media, like I said, you already know this. When I was originally doing my book, this is how this kind of came about. When I was originally doing, doing my book, I was afraid to go direct to my uh, the paper on my book. I didn't want to ruin it, and I knew I wanted this, this particular background paper to be my front of my book. So I originally cut out this elephant just as practice to see if I liked it. And I was gonna put the elephant on here on the front, but the colors were so similar, I needed to push the background to the background and have the elephant look more bold in the front, even though they were similar colors. So to do that, you just take a tiny bit of gesso, and this is just Liquitex white basic gesso, and you're gonna just use the tiniest little bit. You don't need much. And I use a dedicated brush for my gesso, just like I do for my Mod Podge that I keep in water. And then I'm gonna take my spray bottle and I just wanna really thin this out. Get that out of the way. I just wanna thin that out and it's just whitewashing. So I wanna do it on this one because I think the contrast will show up pretty well. And if you don't put enough the first time, you can add more. And I won't do the whole thing because I want you to see the difference. And then you're gonna take that. You can always uh, remove a little bit if you've done too much, just dab it off or whatever. And then heat set it. Oh, that in water. I'm not gonna do this all the way. Then you'll notice um, it, it kind of makes your paper wonky again because you've introduced water. But you can see how it toned down that color. It's all still there, but it's it's not as bright. So that way, if I wanted to introduce an element on the top, it's gonna stand forward in my, in my uh, mixed media collage kind of deal. So anytime you feel like you've ruined something or it's just too dark or it's too, um, too one-dimensional, maybe you have a lot of things going on and it's busy and you want it to look 
like it has depth, do this first, send this to the back, you know, do another layer if it's not quite enough contrast, just keep doing that and adding white until it goes into the background and then your other piece will, will be forward. The other thing that you wanna to do to make that contrast too, and I've done it a little bit on this one, is these edges are all white from cutting them. So if I take something, you can choose whatever color goes with your thing. It could even be one of these bright colors. If you take and get rid of those white edges and then kind of come in a little bit on your, on your piece, it's gonna make that stand out even more. So you just kind of keep adding to until you get it to where it stands out. The other thing that you can do once you get this put on to your piece is you can take a shading pencil or something and then blend that too to almost give it a shadow effect and that'll really make it jump off the page. I'll maybe show that. I haven't done that in any of these yet, but if I it, when I do further on, um, I'll kind of point that out again. So I want to take this though now. Um, it's still damp from my uh, from the the water, the the gesso and water. And even though I dried it, you know, it soaked into the paper really fast. So I'm just going to hit that with my iron. And you want to use um, between a wool and a silk setting, like I said, and you want to protect the painted surface. So put another just blank piece of paper on top of that um, when you do that. And that way you won't get anything on your iron. So I just want it. This one's not even done completely, but you can see how now flat that is again. So I do that in between my different layers because I, I just want to keep working on a flat surface, especially if you're going to doodle or anything like that. You don't want it to be all wavy. So that's just doing some mixed media papers. Um, and then you can continue on just making layers and layers that you want to on that. And then the next thing that I have done is whenever I do anything that has overspray, um, like in this case, I use, if you've watched my videos, I like using this Distress uh, Mica Spray. It's sparkly and you have to shake it up really good. But I use this a lot. Um, it actually, I think I used it on this cover even. When you, in addition to the whitewashing, which I did on this, um, another way to kind of tone down the brightness of something is to spray it with this mica spray. And I've done this paper so much you can't really see, but I'll do a little bit on here because I've shown this before. Is it's really subtle. It's just kind of antiques it a little bit, and it just gives a little shimmer. So that is kind of one way. It has a little color. Um, tarnished brass is one of my favorite colors. There's also a copper one and a pewter one. Um, but those are handy way to tone down. I had actually even done that on this, um, on this book cover. It just kind of, it, it took the bright colors and it just made them a little richer, a little warmer. So that's another thing you can do on your paper. And you see me use this a lot, um, another layer. This is kind of the layers that I do at the very end of, of, of a page, just to kind of give it that extra finished look. It just richens it up, I think. Um, I use this all the time and show this. It's my Imagine Sheer Shimmer, and this I get at Michael's. Sometimes you can't find it in the store, at least in my area, so I, I you can order it online. I order lots of bottles of that because I don't want to ever run out. And again, you can see the same thing. This kind of, it, it, it made it wonky again. So I just would go over with it, my iron and it will take all that bubbliness out and it'll be flat again. So I'll put that by my iron. Okay, so that, um, that was all just overspray. Whenever I wanted to spray my mica, I put a piece of paper, you know, you protect the area around you. I could just keep using that. And so it's gonna be a metallic piece of paper in the end. The other thing that I saved that's kind of weird, I know, but I heard I'm not the only one, is whenever I use my baby wipes and they get real colorful, I just save them because I can use those things um, for just little embellishments too. I had cut a heart because I liked, it looked like a tie-dyed thing. And then I've just, um, I did add a paper backing to it because I wanted to slow stitch on it and give it a little more um, firmness so it wasn't so floppy. It made it easier. And then I just used metallic copper thread and slow stitched around the edge. And then this is a little metal heart that I cut um, because I do jewelry making. I cut, um, I don't, oh yeah, I have the scissors here. 
I used some metal shears that you just use to cut thin metal for jewelry making. And then the other part, I think it's in here. I take um, these antique old vintage uh, picture frames, you know, the little gold ones, and you can take that and then pull, pull them flat with your pliers and then pound them flat with a hammer. And it's just that pretty embossed metal. I cut little hearts out um, and use them in my jewelry. So I thought it was just kind of fun to, so this will be something that maybe gets in my book. I don't know, we'll see. So that, and then um, let's see. Oh, paper, paper, paper. So then I did um, just some more things that I have shown before. I haven't used any in my book yet, but I'm going to. Is um, There's a video that I've done on making resin paper. Like I said, I do jewelry. And so uh, when I have leftover resin, I make paper out of them. In another video, I'm going to show um, what I do with this because this is going to go in my book too but you can make this is just like one little coat of resin this has one little coat of resin and it has some sparkly in it too i don't know why i've had this for years so i'm not sure what i was doing i i probably had sparkle in my resin to do a project and so um it ended up on my paper go back and watch that video i'll put the link down there to teach you how to make this um, but it's handy for projects like this. You can cut words out and use them, um, and it just gives a different effect to the paper. This one's unsealed, so you see both sides of the paper through it. You can seal the paper, and then you'd only see the one side of text. This one I did a little bit more, uh, another layer. It's still very flexible, but it's not going to crack. And that's what I'm going to use in a, a future video that I'm going to do here where I do something fun with that that we'll be using in our book. So that's good. So you wanna maybe go back and watch that one. Then you can also make paper. Um, there's lots of videos out there. I have not made one about how to make your own paper. Maybe I'll do that at one point too. It's kind of a big messy thing and I don't know that I can fit it in this spot, but um, maybe you've made paper before. There's lots of videos out there. But uh, this is really made from book page. Um, that's all I used, the only paper I used for this. I did add a little color. I just add a little dye to it. Um, to my bath and it made it this color. Um, so we can use paper like this in our book because it's from Recycled Book Page. So I have that. And then the, the next thing I wanted to show you um, that you can do, uh, let's see, I have a couple things. I've shown this before, I'll just do this real quick because I think it's in another video, is when you do your embellishments. You can use paper punches too, this was a punch. Um, that I made a flower, but then I backed it with another piece that I did a color. So I don't know if you can see, I've shown this before. Um, little scallop scissors, hole punches, and some uh, stitching. So these are just some different, using different punches. Um, I like using punches because you can layer them. So uh, you can do like, use the reverse. You're using the flower that you punched out. Maybe you're using it in part of your collage or you're making a flower out of it. And then you can use the part that's left over. Um, also, the, this part was a flower cut out and then I put it on another piece. So you can use it as a stencil too. So there's no waste in any of that and you just have all these little decorative elements. So let's put that in there. So think of, of just all the different shapes and cutouts and things that you can make. Um, then the other thing is I did make, let me get back to my one that I did finish here and see what else I did. This could be a punch or freehand, and I think I freehand cut that one. And you can see on my little elephant, he's slow stitched and then added little jewels and things. And I decided to make him a pocket um, instead of gluing them all the way down. So same thing, he started out as one single piece of book page, but before I did the slow stitching and before I cut him out, I glued another piece behind so it would be thicker for a pocket. And then I wanted to put some tickets inside. So to make the little tickets, I found a part of a book page that didn't have uh, any writing. So like maybe this is not a good sample, but you can take a piece like this where you have enough, you only need an inch. Um, a ticket is one inch, one inch by two inches. So you just cut your little rec rectangle on your paper cutter. And then to make the little notches, I just used a regular um, binder size hole punch and just clipped the corners. I didn't even do, I just eyeballed. I didn't, you know, they're not exact, but that's okay. And then if you outline, you know, a ticket has a number on it. 
So I just outlined a little box um, for, for where the ticket number would go. And then I freehanded this one, but then you can also, if you want to look official, like a real ticket, um, I used, I don't have some number stamps, but I had these for jewelry making. Um, it's just uh, the punches. And I had a set of numbers that happened to fit in that little thing. So you can use these as stamps too, uh, if you have that. Or you may have stamps that are numbers. So I did that. And what I did was, um, this was kind of a memory for me of an actual trip. So I put the month, um, November of 2015, as my ticket number. And that way then I can just journal on this. And again, you can see the book page through there. But I did doodling on one and then part of my gold stencil on um, this one just for some little design. So it looks like I cut this out of a paper pack even though I didn't. So that is my little ticket to ride the elephant. And then I, um, another thing that you can do is if you want to put quotes or definitions or anything like that, you can find them online just, you know, on your printer and then, um, or maybe you have something you can scan even and you just get it on your printer and then you print it out onto the book page. So I've done a few things um, and also not just that one, I did the same technique to do this collaging too. So I'll show you that real quick. So if you want to print something direct from your printer onto something other than um, copy paper, all you have to do, and I did for the collage thing, I did currency because I wanted this to kind of be exotic, bohemian, travel maybe. And I remembered that one thing I collect, I collect all kinds of things for, because I never know what I want to use. I've used this in my jewelry actually, is I collect currency from wherever I'm traveling. It's colorful, it's different than ours. Um, and it's just really pretty and it's a cheap souvenir because it's just, you know, you have, you're using it anyway and it's, it's whatever it's worth, right? So I just take these and scan them into my computer and then I have a file and you can do the same thing with coins. Their coins are really interesting too. You can just set these on your scanner, scan them in, and then you have them in a file for use. You could just use hole punches, you know, they're going to be on a piece of paper, hole punch them to get the circle again. So those kinds of things to me you can use um, so scan them in and then all you do is you take an eight and a half by 11 I just use a scrap and then I use just gift wrapping tissue in this case I used white um, in the past when I've done like a quote or something and I want to um, decoupage it onto a colored background and I, I want it to look like maybe it was really printed on that background but maybe my background happens to be the cover of a book a hard cover of a book I can't run that through my printer. So I run it through on a colored tissue paper that's similar and then decoupage it on and you don't even see it. It's that you're, you kind of can't figure out how did that printed text get on that cover. So that's just kind of a fun thing. And so I cut my tissue about eight and a half by 11. I've cut some out of here is why my pieces are cut already, but you just tape it to the top. Um, you don't have to tape all the sides because your paper runs in one direction. You just wanna make sure that's the direction you feed it. My printer happens to feed my paper upside down like this. So it, I've never had it jam or anything. It just works out fine. So you tape your tissue to it. I use wall safe tape because in the, in the case that I don't get any of this black ink that has smeared from my printer and I can use the whole thing, I can remove that tape. It's just, it, it's not very sticky. So you can, you can just take it off. In this case with tissue, it's kind of hard anyway, so I, I don't mind that I can't use the top. So you just take then your tissue that you have your money, and then you just use a metal ruler and a water pen or a paintbrush with water to do your to do, to do your tears. I don't um, usually use a whole piece anyway. I'm just maybe using the elephant head or something like that. So I would just take my, my water pen, a couple of swipes, and you just, you can just tear it that easy. It's very similar to doing the napkin thing. If you take napkins apart, the ply and decoupage, it's gonna handle just like that. So that's just another way that you can create your own, you know, your own paper napkins. I have been hunting for um, pretty decorative napkins to do that with, and I just don't find any I like. So this way I just go on the internet and 
pictures or scan photos or whatever you want, and then you can print them onto tissue paper yourself. So that was a good one. And then I decided I wanted to try to make photo paper um, to do actual photos and have them look like photos, but on book page. So I did a couple of experiments I wanted to show. Um, this one, I did the, um, the definition. I just went on the internet and I pulled one off. I ended up not using this one because I couldn't, it was already bold and then not bold in parts. And I couldn't change that because I had just cut and pasted it. Pasted it. So I ended up typing it out myself um, and just not even using all the words. That way I could get it all um, the same uh, non-bold is what. So um, to do that, same, same process, uh, because I was doing it onto book page and my book page only had a portion that, you know, like I could put a word on this and use it. So you kind of figure out um, by printing it out where, you're, where it's gonna land to make sure it fits on the piece that you have. And then just tape, it doesn't even have to be the whole paper. Just tape the little piece, making sure it's over where you need it to be and run it through your printer. And then you just cut this out with the deco scissors or decorative or paper cut or whatever you want. And so you, you have that. So it's the sky's the limit. You can, you know, take anything and put it on there. So I decided to try photograph. So my first experiment, I decided to try to do something that looked like a double exposure. And I went ahead and I didn't do anything to the book page besides tape it to my paper. And then I ran it through with just a photograph. Now this doesn't work great for uh, pictures with people and there were a lot of detail in this photo. But for me, I wanted, I thought this might end up being the back of a journal card for me um, because it's a memory. And so I may use it still uh, for that. Uh, but I think uh, landscape would look beautiful. You, imagine if you had um, sky, mountains, and water, and to see that text through, I think it would look really pretty. So that's an idea, you can do it just straight onto the book page. And then I wanted to try one where um, I did it on a blank part of the book page. So this was the beginning of a chapter. And I, I could have totally used this one. It came out really clear, except for I have lines. I need to clean my print head, I guess. And I haven't done that, but I wanted to show it anyway so that you can see how it would look to be just on this kind of sepia, um, this is aged color paper. So you can do that. And then I decided to try, and I got a happy accident out of it. Um, I wanted to see uh, on just so how that would look. So I uh, just did a, a single sheet, and I just did uh, two layer, two coats of gesso on, the, on it and then taped it to my paper. And again, I need to clean my printer, but it came out, uh, you don't see the faces as clear. That's why I think doing something like a landscape, a floral would be really pretty. You could do a floral on here and then add your own painting to it or slow stitching or something to embellish it even more. I do cheese like that because I'm not an artist. Uh, me trying to freehand a flower and have it look like a flower might not work so well. Um, I can do little flower power looking flowers, that kind of thing, cartoony ones, but nothing that looks real. So this is kind of a way to do that and cheat it a little bit. So um, it works with one caveat, okay? My first attempt was this one, which was a scene. And it was a panorama picture I had taken. And I may try to do it again because my original idea was to do like an accordion folded pop out kind of thing with this panoramic picture. And when I did it, I accidentally touched a part of it and got a fingerprint on it before it was dry. When you do it on gesso versus just plain paper, all the ink sits on the top of the gesso. It doesn't soak in like it does on a piece of paper. When I printed it out on book page, I could almost touch it immediately. It needed to dry a little bit, but nothing, nothing too much. Kind of like any kind of photo you print from your printer. This was so wet with uh, ink, you wouldn't even, it was, I've never seen this much ink sitting on top of paper. And I had accidentally touched it, so I used a baby wipe to kind of smear it. And I liked how it looked. It looked like an oil painting, so I smeared the whole thing. But you can't tell what it was anymore. But it, it could be a background. I'm saving it because I know I'll use it for something. But I really just loved how that looked. So my idea is to try and do it on purpose. So I'm going to take a landscape uh, and then take a paintbrush while it's still wet and kind of 
keeping it where you can see what the picture is still, but kind of making it look like a impressionist oil painting. So I haven't tried that yet, but it's on my list. So it, it may be next, because I just think that might be, it might be a really neat technique. So there's that, and um, what else? What else do I have that I have done here? I almost think that's about it for the paper. My paper ideas, I have some more, but I haven't, like I said, I haven't done experiments yet, so I, I don't want to share. Um, you can make these in your finished journal card. This one ended up, like I said, with two layers. I started with two layers, and I kind of have done that. Like I've made some, you know, a head here just to be prepared where you can kind of get the, the base part done. So I would do, for pullouts like this, start with two layers because you're gonna be adding um, at least a decorative layer on the top probably, and maybe something else on the back. So you get two, you know, you're gonna get too thick if you get more than like four layers. So this started out as two, then I added this decorative paper and then um, just gessoed the other side and added and did stitching and my lines like normal. Somebody asked me how I make my lines. I have one of those stamps that makes lines, but I don't like it, so I don't use it very much. I sometimes will use these little ones um, for smaller areas, but I don't have a good one for a large area. So I just use um, clear rulers, and this is the one I use the most, and it's just a Helix office ruler. And if you look, there's little, where all the like eighth inch lines are, and then the quarter inches are a little bit longer, I just kind of eyeball I make my first line, eyeballing with the bottom of my card, draw a line, and then just keep moving up whatever increment I want. They don't always come out perfect, but they're pretty good. It's tedious, but um, I like how it works better than the stamp. And then I use, um, I'm not, I don't always use black pen. So in this case, I've used kind of, my favorite was a sepia colored one, but it's, it's dried up now. But if you go to Michael's, um, and go to the artist section, there's pens that they sell individually, and there's actually even notepad up there that you can test them. So you just pick some colors that you like and some some width, you know, thicknesses that you like, and you test them out there, and, and that's what I mostly use are these brown ones. They also have, I didn't have this um, when that person asked a question, but I have a bigger sewing ruler that's clear, and it has lines already on it. I did find this one at Michael's in the, where they just, by the knitting section, they have a little sewing area. And I found this one there, it's a Fiskars, but it's a smaller size, I can actually work with it on my table. So that's handy too. Um, but that's what I use to make my lines, nothing, not rocket science or anything. And then I've just done another little card here. Same thing, I use the currency with the tissue paper, just a different picture, you know, my my mixed media, I'm calling it, the background that I did. Stitch, just like I would any other kind of paper pack card that I had. You know, same elephant fussy cut out. This was turned out kind of neat. Um, I had just sewed um, the back, like two or three coats to write on. And then I decided to use one of these bright colors that I had gotten. And so I did the edges and all that with it. But I did it way too dark because it's a brand new ink pad. It was way too dark um, on the back side. So I took my baby wipe and you can kind of, I don't know if you can see this, you can see that texture. I took my baby wipe, most wiped most of it off. Then I laid my baby wipe down and I just used a little brayer like that. And it, it left that texture and I really liked it. So um, that's just kind of another thing you can do. And then it's kind of the tea stain color because I went then with my vintage photo after I stitched just to highlight my stitching. And then I just kind of went around. So nothing crazy. Same kind of stuff, you know, as I'm doing this, I'm trying to think, okay, what normal things would I put in it? And then just trying to um, do those utilizing just the book page paper. So I think it can be done. I have some fun things coming up. My next one, um, I'm already ready to record. So um, there's going to be uh, one about just slow stitching, I think, some stitches, because someone asked me if I would do one to show what stitches and how to do them, because it's been a long time. And then the other one that I'm doing is making puzzles. So we're going to do that out of book page. So uh, if you liked this one, give me a thumbs up. And uh, 
If you have any questions, if I left anything out, I'm sure I did, just uh, put them in the comments and I will get right to those. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.